everybody. Welcome to episode seven of the Insiders on Real Estate and Marketing. I'm Sandy Hibbard, and this is my wonderful co-host, Mr. Troy Olson. And today in episode seven, we're going to talk about how to build a thriving real estate business. Or if you're not a realtor, I think some of these things will really apply to your businesses because we want to give you um, some steps to follow, not necessarily a formula, but some things that have proven true in my business as a marketer. Um, and for Troy, he's been out in the field. He's seen the good and the bad of building a real estate team. So he's going to share some of his things with you today as well. So Troy, hey, it's good to see you. Good it's to be back. Yep. How's been, it going? It's going. Uh, I think you know, we're all still you know, not in our comfort zone yet. And right. you know, we're still doing a lot of stuff on Zooms. And we're wearing masks and gloves. Mine's, mine's over there. Um, but you know, yes, people are still buying houses. And uh, the, the inventory levels are extremely low. So. Um, just one day, one deal at a time. Yeah, yeah I had a client. Um, she sent me the pictures for a, a listing on Wednesday, last Wednesday, for Coming Soon. We post the Coming Soon. It goes live on Friday. She sends me the video on Saturday. She has a contract on Monday. Yeah. So I, I think this is the way things are going right now. Yeah, I had a, a listing that you posted for me. We went live on a Friday, about 4 o'clock. Uh -huh. Seller needed Saturday to get um, you know, the house really ready. We had 20 showings on Sunday. And we were we were under contract that night, so it literally the showing started at 9 a.m. and they ended at 8 p.m. In a deal like that, did you have multiple offers from 20 people? Or? So um, the people that liked it that wanted to make an offer, they didn't really reach out to me until Monday morning to say, "Hey, you know, my client wants to wants to put in an offer." Yeah. We were already pending. Like the buyer said, no option period, which mm -hmm. which is unheard of. Mm -hmm. So it was too late to get in the game, basically. Unbelievable. I mean, so I, th I would say that right now is a super time for people to put their house up for sale. Yeah, this, this one had a pool, which obviously the whole, because of COVID, people aren't maybe going on vacations, they're not going to water parks, right. or maybe the community pool, you know, isn't open because yeah. of it. So anything with a pool is just crazy hot right now. Uh, so our prediction, we're seeing it happen. Mm -hmm. And you are crazy busy with that, but you're also out building a new market center yep. and so you're adding to your team you're recruiting and so i wanted to spend some time today since you're in the midst of all that and talking about that and uh, focusing a little bit around maybe identifying three things i mean there may, there's probably more than that i'm sure but but let's try to find three things that you're noticing that realtors need to start a successful business yeah so i mean nobody you know nobody can get extremely successful, you know, all by themselves. It's all about, you know, a team and, and leverage and, and hiring the right people. I recently went through, um, you know, Keller Williams career visioning for the second time. And when I took it the first time, I was a little overwhelmed with the Kellerisms and just really the tools and the resources that it takes to identify talent. Yeah. You know, I didn't use, I used the Tony Robbins disc assessment in the past, which, which is fine, yeah. and, but it's a trimmed down version of what we use at Keller Williams um, with the KPA model. It's 100 questions. It's a disc on steroids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then my, um, my real estate coach, um, Alice Daly, she's a great maps coach. I've been with her since January 1. She also has um, a test, a quiz, uh, assessment, whatever you want to call it, that I've had uh, potential candidates take that really helps me understand their personalities, how to talk to them and, and how not to talk to them. Awesome. So um, I had my first uh, team member join um, last week, mm -hmm. and then I have a second one coming you know, this week. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to uh, rebuild. So I, I'm, I'm certainly into in rebuilding mode, and now we're in onboarding mode. So a uh, few other people, you know, in the hopper that uh, I'm, I'm in sure. discussions with. So uh, excited to get back into that. So are you finding in this climate right now mm -hmm. with COVID that people want to get in the real estate business? I mean, what a well, risky move to be sure. taking right now. I mean, but I think that, you know, a lot of a lot of people are getting more educated on the concept of, of being a team. Uh, you know, just because you have a real estate license doesn't mean, you know, you're going to be great and know what to do and have the direction. Right. So by getting on a team, you know, for example, if somebody gets on my team, they have the marketing resources that, that you bring to us. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a transaction coordinator mm -hmm. uh, and then all the tools that, you know, we can offer uh, at Keller Williams plus all the training. So 
it's just you're not out there on an island, you know, all by yourself. Mm -hmm. One of the team members um, that joined me last week, she had made a run at real estate a few years ago at the same time um, launching a, a business and the business took off, but the real estate career never did. And this time around, she said, I'm not going to go solo. Right. I want to get on a team so I can, you know, be mentored and have these tools and these resources. And within six days of joining my team, she has a buyer and we submitted an offer uh, on a property already. Yeah, I mean, you need a mentor in this business, it, especially well, if you're coming <clears throat> from a non-real estate background. Absolutely. Oh my God, it's like Greek, the things that you have to do, the hats you have to wear. Well, so how do I list a house? Mm -hmm. And when do I do the pre-photo walkthrough mm -hmm. and you know all the paperwork mm -hmm. and just the video? It isn't just you're on the job and you figure it out. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how it was for me mm -hmm. 15 years ago. And I wish that I would have, I wish the teen concept maybe would have been a little bit right. more out there. Uh, I th certainly think I'd be further along with my real estate business if well, I would have had that. you're certainly not hurting. I mean, you, you've no, done I mean, great. No, yeah, nobody's going to feel sorry for and, me. But I you've just, also had, I mean, I've known you a long time mm -hmm. and I've worked with you for a long time during this space of time. And you've had a lot of help. You've had a, as far as training sure. in accountability, um, marketing, you understood about marketing. Yeah, I think it, that is really key for a realtor that's getting in this business. Well, and I think too is there's a lot more ways to communicate with your database now than there was 15 years oh ago. My God. So what are some of the differences that you're seeing and utilizing right now than you would have done 10 years ago or five so, years ago? So uh, before I hired out of pain and it was just <laughs> <laughs> grab a body and fill that hole so we don't sink in the I boat. Think we can all relate. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you know that's something that I learned, um, you know, last week when I was and, and Kristen Cole, um, you know, very very powerful businesswoman inside of Carla Williams. You know, she's in multiple markets, and the number one takeaway that I took from Career Visioning um, for those two uh, two days, three days that I was on, and we did this of course via Zoom, was you know, don't hire out of pain. Where I did that before, which is probably why it did not work. So there's a much more um, strategic, calculated approach mm -hmm. to to building this time than last time. Well, I think building a team would have to be uh, you would have to utilize those basic tenets of having a vision, understanding marketing, um, having a strategy, creating a plan, all of that. The things that we teach a realtor that they need to have. Building a team as a team leader or a market center owner, you've got to have a vision for what you want to have in that market and the kind of people you want. Well, right? and, and I think, you know, there's a whole list of questions that I ask when there's, you know, a candidate and it's, what is your why? Why real estate? Well, I want to sell houses or I like to look at houses. That's not really a reason. Just because you like to look at houses mm -hmm. isn't really a reason that that's what you are going to make, you know, your career out right, of it. Right. So, um, again, a lot of qualifying questions. And, and again, not everybody's cut out to, you know, be on a team. Um, not everybody's cut out, you know, for my style. Um, so, again, you go through the process, you interview, and, and you hopefully pick the right talent, and you groom and develop them to and get them to the next level. Absolutely. Teach them how to create successes mm -hmm. and how to count them. You know, no matter what kind of business that you're in, you need to learn how to count your successes. What, how much money do you expect to make? How are you going to make that money? What does it mean to make that money? What does it require of you? Um, how many closings do you want to have if you're a realtor? How many uh, seats filled in a restaurant if you're going to open a cafe? I mean, there's so many things in counting our successes. And I think that that might be different from person to person because some, some people want the world and other people want comfort. So how are you approaching that with when you're coaching and mentoring your new agents? How are you handling them counting their success. Yeah, so How do you approach that? What I'm asking them is not only, you know, why why real estate, but what what are your goals? You know, what what's your what's your what's the first 30 days success look like? What's the first 6 months? What's the first year? What, you know, Gary Keller says you can be anywhere you want to be in 5 years. You know, and I have that written down, you know, on my whiteboard. I know I'm forced to look at it, you know, every day. But if if you have a goal in mind of a GCI, a gross commission goal, or I want to sell 24 homes my first year, Okay, that's two a month every single month. You know, we all wish that real estate was that simple, mm -hmm. but you know, you could have ten closings one steady. month. <laughs> Correct. You could have ten closings one month and and one the next month yeah. and everywhere in between. Yeah. So if your goal is twenty four, you gotta back into it and let's just say it's you know, twelve months for two deals a month, 
Where is that business going to come from? Mm -hmm. What are your, what's your data source? Again, is it builders, vendors? Mm -hmm. You know, are you in a networking group? Mm -hmm. How big is your sphere of influence? All part of your strategy, part of your plan exactly. and understanding marketing. We, what I show them is, you know, what's the touch plan? It's okay. How many times in a year are we going to touch them? And then how, uh, if they're a past client, you know, their one year home uh, anniversary, that's a bomb bomb video, their birthday, that's a bomb bomb video. Um, the obvious holidays, Thanksgiving, you know, Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, um, you know, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day. Uh, so again, you start adding up and then going, okay, we're doing an email campaign, you know, once a month. So, you know, we teach the 36 touch system, you know, at KW and you say, well, that's three touches, you know, every single month for 12 months. That seems like a lot. But when you back down into the different strategies, mm -hmm. That's how you calculate, you know, how are you going to get to the 24 closings mm -hmm. a year? So. Absolutely. Well, you're talking about having a plan. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. Um, a little anecdotal story is when I used to go to New York, I would spend lots of, but this is before I lived in New York. And I would go to New York every couple or three months and I would stay for like two and three weeks. And I was just like this wide-eyed Texas tourist and taking pictures and I because my team is virtual and my business is a virtual model I was able to work and do the things that I need to do and yet be a tourist and have fun well I found after a couple of trips that I needed to go to New York and I needed to have a focus because otherwise I found myself just splattering myself all over the place even when I went to Paris I said I'm gonna go to Paris I'm going to you know, write a book, or I'm going to create a blog post, or I'm going to make a new website. And I think for realtors, it's really important to have a focus and to work. You know, we've been talking about that a little bit in last episode, but one of the things that I've also experienced in my business is when times got tough and I was tempted to go get a job, I would tell myself, Sandy, if you would work eight hours a day and clock in and clock out just like you would with this job interview you're thinking about, your business would explode. And so I think that is a huge key in creating the plan, in mentoring agents, in counting our successes and understanding marketing and all those things we're talking about is that first of all, you've got to work on this business. And it's not like, okay, I don't have to work. I'm an entrepreneur now. I'm going to wait for the phone to ring. I'm going to wait to show this one listing. If you get up and you sit at your desk, if you don't have a listing, if you don't have an appointment and you work for eight hours and you prospect for eight hours, you're going to see results. Well, and I understand that, again, because of COVID, we're not out, you know, we're not out as much as we were before, maybe, and it's easier to build a relationship together than, you know, virtually, mm -hmm. but nobody's coming to save you and I, like you've got to market yourself to other right. realtors and other business owners right. to get their marketing business. And again, nobody's just, I'm not sitting around waiting for the phone to ring saying, Hey, I want to buy a house or, Hey, I need to list mine. Mm -hmm. We have to go create that. And the only way to do it is to call, email, text, send, send letters, and send this cards. Is, this is why you've got to find people that have a fire in them because if you're not passionate and you don't know why you're doing this you will fade off after your initial training yep. i've seen it happen so many times and i know that you have too but if you get uh, if you have an agent or a business owner or an entrepreneur who has a, uh, a fire and a passion for what they're doing they're not afraid to work they're not going to feel all sad for themselves. They're not going to be waiting for someone to come save them because their passion is in that work. And I well, think that's so huge. And the very first sales job that I had out of college when I was interviewing for that, um, you know, he told me, he said, this is back in 1998, so you guys can figure out how old I am or how young I am. <laughs> he did not hire anybody um, <laughs> 44 and a half. Um, <laughs> He didn't hire anybody, male or female, that did not play competitive sports in high school to be on his sales yeah. team. And I, I, I never thought about that, but I mean, we all, again, I, I played sports, you know, I've got a brother that's two years older and it was always competitive. Chemistry. Yes, so you know how to be on a team. Yeah. And again, sports make you that's competitive. So I've, like I've looked for that ever since, um, you know, when I've been doing my thing. Mm -hmm. For the next few minutes before we close down, I wanna share kind of some ideas that I have about uh, steps to take if you're building a real estate business. And 
uh, the, the first thing is that you have to have a forward vision. Mm -hmm. You have to have vision. <laughs> you have to have a fire. You have to want to work and you have to want to love what it is that you're doing. And when I say portrait of an agent, you know, we've taught in our marketing classes for agents to visualize what kind of agent do you want to look like? What kind of agent do you want to be? Are you after the luxury? I mean, are you after, you know, like you were saying a few minutes ago, first time home buyers, you want to work with newlyweds, you want to work with families. So building that portrait of yourself, I think is really important. And part of that is understanding how to market to the new world, how to represent yourself online, on the web, in social. Um, and most of all, understanding in your portrait that some things are never gonna change. We need to be flexible when it comes to marketing, but we also need to understand that some things never change. Customer service, uh, your authenticity, being real about who you are in your business and how you wanna represent yourself, and then building relationships based on that. I think that that is the first thing to create a mindset for an agent, to create that agent mindset. First, you gotta love houses, you gotta love the business, Got to love people. And, yeah. you know, we all have our, our moments where it's like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. But again, you are representing a buyer or seller, and this is the most expensive item, asset that they will ever buy or sell. They're going to get emotional about it. And you have to help, you have to help manage that emotion. Yeah. And, you know, how you do that is sometimes you are, you know, a, a psychiatrist. Now, Cody said something really funny yesterday. He's like, I'll have a five minute funeral with you, but I won't have a five hour or a five day or a five week or a five month funeral. So yes, sellers are nervous about people coming in the house. Buyers may be nervous about going out and they, again, you know, uh, appraisals, you know, we had a couple of appraisals that, you know, didn't come in and you got to talk the seller off the ledge and, and really digest the numbers. So you got to be patient and know that this is not a nine to five job. You're going to get calls and emails, you know, at all hours of the day. Absolutely. And then moving from there, it's about setting up your strategy to how you're going to work. And I think that uh, sometimes selecting, well, not sometimes, I'm going to say what you need to do is on paper, on your computer, choose 10, five, three methods that you're going to use to deliver your business message. You need to know how you're going to market going into this thing, not after the fact. It's not about, it, I've seen this happen so many times, Troy. It's not about you hire an agent, they get all fired up. Oh, rah, rah, rah. They get saved. They come to Jesus, all this. They come, they join the brokerage. They go get their training. But during all this time, they're not thinking about building a business. Right. And then training stops and coach says, okay, how many um, leads do you have to call? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, know? you, you can't think of it as transactional. You've yeah. got to think of it as, as lead generation. Another thing is, is it's your business. track everything. Yeah, so again, absolutely. it's like, how many, how many letters did you mail? How many notes did you mm -hmm. write? You know, how many posts did you make? Because you're going to want to come back and look at those things to see what worked. Are they working? Right. So, so make your strategy. I'm going to use this, this, and this in order to brand my message. I'm going to execute this stuff like an expert. So I'm getting trained. I'm leaning on my mentor. I'm going and, uh, you know, interacting with other agents because you want to be able to execute like you're an expert, not like you're a newbie, well, you know, and let me just say this. One thing that Jim Fight used to say that I thought was so cool, uh, Jim Fight's a friend of ours in the real estate business. He said, when you're on the other end of the phone with the prospect or in a listing interview, you have to know that you're the expert. You have to be convinced that you are the expert. Those people don't know as much as you do. But so, so timidity has got to go. You can't be scared. You can't be timid. You can't think you don't know enough because I guarantee you, you know more than they do. Well, and if you don't believe in what you're doing or yeah. what you're selling, how, how are they going to believe in you? And, and something that I say on every listing appointment when we get going, Sandy, if you hire me, I'm going to ask you why you hired me. Yeah. And if you don't hire me, I'm going to ask why you didn't hire me. So I don't ever make that mistake again on a listing appointment. And I think that they like you know, the honesty, you know, of that. To round off um, all these things, and there's so much more. I mean, we could teach a seminar actually on, on this. Um, understanding and finding your competitive advantage. And when I used to teach the uh, round table class back a, a number of years ago, I did a round table class for realtors all over the Metroplex. And it was um, 
sponsored by one of the big mortgage companies. And so we would bring realtors in and I would teach marketing. And, and one of the things that I struggled getting across was know your competitive advantage. And agents didn't seem like they could get that. They couldn't wrap their mind around that. And it simply means, what do you bring to the table? And I found that so many people are shy about that. They're shy to, to, to boastfully say, well, I'm good at this, or I like this, or because maybe they weren't secure enough to say it, or because they didn't think it applied to real estate. But it does. When you have a gift, a passion, um, a skill, or a talent, that's going to help you build your real estate business because real estate is a what? A people business. Well, and I'll give you two examples on that, both on the buy side and the sell side. So at 4.30 today, I have a call with a client yep. that I'm going to be listing their property. Well, there's two of the exact floor plans on the market just a couple streets over. You know, one is priced at 450 and one is priced at 460. They look a little bit different on the inside. The floor plan is the same. You know, the year built is the same. Bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, garage, all the mm -hmm. same. The difference are lot locations and then finish out. Well, I don't know what my seller is going to want to list their property for. I assume it's probably going to be the one that's 10,000 more than the one that's lower. I called both agents yesterday. They both called me back. Hey, you've been on the market for, you know, X days. How many showings have you had? They gave me that information. But I have credibility with them. And I said, hey, I'm just giving you a heads up. I'm going to be listing something just like what you have. I'm curious, what is your traffic been like? So I have that information to share, um, you know, with my seller at 4.30 mm -hmm. today. On the buy side, before I walked in here, I made a phone call to a listing agent. Showed the property yesterday at 6.30. It's been on the market three days today, so two days yesterday. Multiple offers, three o'clock on Thursday. So I called the listing agent and said, what is important to your seller? They want a closing date of X and they want a five-day lease back because of the timing of when their new home that they're building is scheduled to be done. I have that competitive information because I made that phone call mm -hmm. versus just sending over an offer and not asking what is important. Mm -hmm. So again, using that to my advantage for my buyer and my seller. Right, that's a competitive advantage. Exactly. That's what Troy brings to the table. So not everybody's gonna be like you. Not everybody is going to have that kind of um, aggression in communication. So what is it? And that's what I think that is important for an agent to look at, you know, what do I bring to the table? What's my mission? What's my vision? What's my purpose in getting into real estate? Um, why am I doing this? All the things you were saying earlier, where am I going to go with this? Where do I want to be in five years? Get a clear picture of yourself in your head and, and, and paint that portrait of an agent for yourself with the help of a mentor, with the help of your guide. And to me, that's the very first start. You know, that's the foundation of well, being able to build a real estate business. And it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what brokerage firm you're with. If you're brand new, that's fine. We were all new in our, at our trade at one point. Find an agent that you can shadow and that they'll mentor you and, 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 and learn from them. Absolutely. You know, there's a reason that, you know, the people that are coaching and teaching now is because they are successful. I want to be, you know, where they are. So I listen to what they say. Mm-hmm. I take notes and then I implement that into my business model. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Build a vision board. Um, for, there are some people whose competitive advantage is they're creative mm -hmm. um, and they can visualize things. So maybe a vision board would be your forte to help paint your picture so that you can see how you want to market, what you want to market, what your vision is, what the market is that you're going to hit, um, what your niche is going to be. Like we talked about in last month's episode, building a niche in all of this or choosing one, uh, it should be part of your plan and your strategy to not just say, well, I'm going to go out and represent the whole world, but rather as a newbie, I think it's more comfortable if you know this is where I'm going in at. And then that can always expand. Don't, what do you think about that? Well, so, you know, the vision board is is draw your Disneyland. People say, what, yeah. are, you, what are you talking about? If you read the story about Walt Disney, mm -hmm. he had drawn what he wanted Disneyland to look like. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. he passed away before it was done. And somebody had made the comment, it's unfortunate that he never got to see this. But 
he did yeah. in his mind. He had it all laid That's out. Cool. So draw your Disneyland Absolutely. is I love that. what do you want your personal and your professional life to look like, mm -hmm. you know, one, three, five years mm -hmm. uh, and make sure you are set up with multiple, you know, streams of income Absolutely. Uh, and just in case, you know, something happens. One thing I want to add um, to this conversation, Troy, is that new agents need to follow what their broker is telling them mm -hmm. to do. And I have a cute story about this. A fellow, a friend of mine, years ago, he bought into a Domino's pizza franchise. And within a year, he broke all the records, was like number one in the country and all of this. And he goes to the big rah-rah convention and he receives his awards. And one of the guys asked him, how did you do it? You're, you're an insurance man and you got into the pizza business and you've broken all the records. How did you do it? And he said, I followed the manual to the T. And he took that franchise manual from Domino's and he did everything they told him to do. And that was his success. So I think for a new agent who's not been in the business, that, that is crucial to coming in and following that manual. Well, we all, again, we're, we're competitive, we're salespeople, we're entrepreneurs, it's our own business. We all think we have the right way. There's a reason that you pay that franchise fee for whatever it may be. There's a reason that that thing works is Absolutely. because it's been tested time and time again. Yeah, yeah. So don't be arrogant and toss that right. out and say you're going right. to do it yourself. Don't go rogue and go. Yeah. I mean, bring your bring your competitive advantage sure. into it. Bring your personality into it. But but those things are really uh, crucial for success. Um, eventually, a new agent is going to build a business mm -hmm. if they're successful. So they need to be thinking about branding. Yeah. And I don't always tell a new agent, you know, you need to get a brand identity together. I like maybe sometimes to wait and let them get their feet wet, let them get established a little bit. But eventually, I think that, that is a huge key to success in moving your real estate business to the next level is by having a distinguishable brand apart from your broker. I hope I don't get in trouble for saying that, Troy, but I think that's really important. And if I can just be so brash to say that you were able to move your business across lines because you had branded Troy Olson. I didn't. I had, a, right? I had a brand and every, it's on everything. Yeah. You know, it's your pens and your paper and your email signature and your website yeah. and your listing presentation, your buyer. Everything has to look the same. That's your brand. When you go into, you know, In-N-Out Burger, it's real simple. You want a one, two, or a three. You know, you go into McDonald's, <laughs> they, they all look it's, the same. You know, simplicity. You don't need to have yeah. 10 different colors. Uh, oh, gosh. We'll probably save talking about branding for a different episode sure. because there's a lot of detail in that. But, but it goes back to um, creating that vision of yourself, following the lead of your broker, of your team member, of your guide, um, and being willing to work and then finding out what those methods are that you're going to choose to use to put your business out there. And I think that there is success in that. So like we always do, three takeaways from today um, that I want you to bring home. Troy? So um, you got to jump on technology. We got to be more visible than we've ever been before just because we don't have the ability to be you know, out, uh, out in, in person and, and building the relationships. Um, you know, we talked about the competitive advantage. You really got to know the competition. Uh, again, sellers are starting here. And again, if there's multiple offers, that's great. Um, you know, I have a couple of listings that have been on the market for a while. You got to be strategic about your price reductions. You got to listen to the feedback that you're getting from, um, you know, other agents. We're in the business to sell homes, not list homes. Uh, you can quote me on that. And then, um, you know, you talked about celebrating success, honestly. I haven't had time this year to really slow down and look at that. Um, you know, I don't watch a scoreboard during the game. Right. Um, you know, what does Kenny Rogers say in The Gambler? You know, never count your money when you're sitting at the table. Oh, right. Just, yeah. just keep going. And then, again, you don't get caught up on GCI. Don't get caught up on number of units or, you know, sales volume. Just keep doing what you're doing. The numbers will show up at the end of the year. I love that. I love that. So. Um, my three takeaways, know how to market in this new business world, like you're saying, uh, and we didn't compare notes. So I, I agree with you. Number one, technology. We are at home. People are at home right now. We're in a virus. We're in a pandemic. Um, you have got to use technology. I know that here at Real News Communications Network, they are blowing up because everyone is realizing we need to have our faces on this 
technology so that we can still keep relationships coming in. So know how to market in this new business climate. Number two, focus on a plan that you can deliver. Now, once you get through training, once you get through uh, some of the initial things that your guide is going to make you or suggest for you to do, I think it's really important for you to focus on a plan that you can deliver, not something that's pie in the sky that you're never going to reach. Um, I use a, a allegory called time, money, and imagination. If you don't have the time, if you don't have the money, and you don't have the imagination for it, don't do it. <laughs> so be able to deliver the plan you choose. And then lastly, know and believe in your competitive advantage. Again, we didn't compare notes, but that absolutely is huge. You have to know who you are going into this business and know how successful you can be. You gotta see it, you gotta believe it. And like I say, if you build it, they will come. They will. Guys, thank you so much for joining Troy and I in episode seven. We'll see you next month. Thank you, everybody. Be safe. See you soon. Ciao.